What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna break down how to respond to difficult texts. A lot of guys really struggle with what to do when a girl sends them a curveball or just throws a shit test their way that they weren't expecting. So in this video, we put together a compilation of some of the most difficult texts and I'm gonna walk you through how I personally respond in every single one of these situations to get the date. All right, so let's take a look at some examples of the most difficult types of text situations you're likely to find yourself in. So the first one's pretty interesting. We have a date set up, they have the date I go to confirm, and she responds back with a shit test. I say, yo, sexy, and she says, you're definitely not hollering at me like that. I'm sure you texted the wrong person. Now, obviously she's being sarcastic here, and if I get too logical and say, oh, you know, I meant to text you, that's gonna lose me value. So I need to playfully reframe. And I say, are you not sexy? She says, oh no, I most certainly am, but that yo, that's like what you tell your bro, and I'm no one's bro. She's no one's bro. So then here, I just, again, I respond with more playful reframing. I say, of course not. If you were my bro, we'd have some issues. So in situations like this, you wanna hold your frame, you don't wanna get overly apologetic because you didn't do anything wrong. You don't wanna get overly logical either. And you can see it works because she says, oh mayo, so funny. Do you have an Instagram, by the way, sir? So then the conversation gets back on track. Here's another good one. So. This is a text I'm sure a lot of guys dread getting. The, you know, the much hated, I'm sorry, maybe right now isn't the best time for me to do this. I don't wanna waste your time message, right? So a lot of guys make the mistake of just giving up when they get something like this. They're like, oh, well, you know, she's, she's being flaky, blah, 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 right? But really what you wanna do in situations like this is figure out what the underlying concern here is. It could be one of two things. Either she has some concern or objection or she lost attraction for you because you did something retarded over text. If you do do anything bad, that's gotta be the former and you need to figure out what it is so you can address it. So as here I say, not the right time to meet for a drink, trying to get her to kind of expand and she says, yes, I'm sorry. So a situation like this is good to just be straight up and just ask her what's up. Now a lot of guys will do this. Uh, guys will either, again, you know, just give up or they'll get too butthurt and be like, well, you know, like you're that kind of flaky bitch. I don't want to meet you anyway, right? But if you can just straight up be like, hey, what's up? That's a pretty high value position. So she says, it's just the wrong time for me to be meeting people to possibly date. I had an incredibly shitty experience the last time I tried. I don't want to make the same mistake. So again, I'm sorry and I wish you the very best. Again, a lot of guys would give up here, but what you need to do is show a little bit of empathy and reframe because her big thing is, I had a big, bad experience in the past, I don't wanna have one again, which is pretty dumb if you think about it because everyone's had bad experiences and you can't have good experiences if you don't take chances. So here I say, sorry to hear about that. Uh, I've had of those, a few of those too, empathy, but good things never come to those who don't take a bit of a chance, the reframe, We've been talking for over a month now. Not much can come from a casual drink. So just making the whole thing seem as painless as possible. And I say ending things here would be very anticlimactic, LOL. So touching on the fact that she's invested a lot in this interaction and you know, she doesn't want to, you know, I don't want her to lose out on all this investment. And you can see that this message works extremely well because she says, I agree with you. Sometimes you just got to take a leap of faith. I like to meet and give an opportunity. All right, so here's an example of one of my roommate's conversation. I was helping him with some of these messages. So she uh, basically opens him, but she opens him up with a shit test, right? And a lot of guys struggle with what to do when a girl's just like kind of being flirty, but at the same time also testing them. They either get too logical or they get defensive and they lose you know, attraction, or sometimes they just become a bitch, right? And you wanna take some path where you're giving it back to her in a fun, flirty way. So I say, of course not, I'm super modest with a winky face. Aha, I'm pretty sure a modest person doesn't say they're modest. So I have them say, perhaps you can give me some lessons, uh, modesty lessons on our date then. She says, on our date, huh? As long as you treat me like a queen, we'll get along just fine, LOL. So what she's trying to do is, in a playful way, she's trying to prize frame herself, like I'm a queen, you have to like earn my affection. Again, he doesn't want to just jump onto this frame because then, you know, he's gonna have to be like winning her over. But at the same time, he doesn't want to get like super logical or anything like that. So I have him say, uh, it's, I'll treat you like a princess. You have to earn queen privileges. So keeping the context of the conversation, but also reframing it. She says, haha, is that right? Mm -hmm. We will discuss this more tomorrow, LOL. Good night. So playing along, but also reframing it in a way that better suits you know, the frame he wants to have, which is actually he's the prize and she has to earn his affection. 
Here's another interesting one. So this is something that you know can happen from time to time. Uh, you're talking to a chick and you say something that's like a little flirty and then she just overreacts and assumes it, you just might want to, you know, you just must want a one night stand. This is actually quite annoying. So if any girls are watching this video and you're trying to get with yours truly, uh, ideally don't do this. So uh, I say only if you show up in the same outfit as your profile pic, not even that flirty of a message, especially because in her profile pic, it's literally her in a swimsuit showing off her ass. So I just kind of am commenting on that. But she says, yeah, right, LOL. I guess we aren't meeting, LOL, which sucks because I thought we had a good nerd combo. So here I'm just trying to basically get, even though I kind of know what the issue is, I want her to actually say. It. So I say, we aren't meeting, why is that? Haha, <laughs> because now I'm not really sure what you're looking for. Like, I'm just looking to date and see if we like each other, just to be honest. You know, because me making a flirty joke means like I only must want a one-night stand. So here in situations like this, you just want to kind of basically state the obvious uh, because she's clearly not picking up on what you're saying. So I say, it was a joke, my dear. Yeah, I'm looking for a cool girl I have chemistry with. She says, okay, lol. And there was always just a bit of seriousness behind every joke. So you know, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So now the conversation is back on track. I said, well, if you do decide to wear the bikini for a date, I'll support your choice, babe. So I'm not being apologetic here. That's the mistake some guys might make. They'll be like, yeah, you know, hope I, you know, hope I didn't you know, offend you or something like that. I'm still going to just keep that fun, flirty vibe and then move things forward with, do you like wine? Here is something that I'm sure every single guy has gone and fucking hates. So you're trying to make plans and you get the dreaded maybe. So do you like wine? Yes, red wine. Good. We should split a ball sometime soon. And she responds with maybe. Like what the fuck am I supposed to do with a maybe? Now the mistake guys make here is they just jump on that. You know, they respond too positively to something that's kind of haphazard. They're like, okay, cool. What night is good for you? They try to move things forward. But you don't want to just like, you know, just push through that. You actually want to take a step back and get her to commit fully before you move things forward. So I say, uh, you don't sound confident. How so? Maybe question mark says, lol, oh, I meant yes. So that's much better. Now I can move things forward. And what I do here is actually reward her, you know, committing more into the act interaction by giving her my number. That's better. Text me and I give her my number. And basically what I get to do is I get to move things forward, move things over to text while at the same time rewarding her compliance. All right, so this one is also uh, pretty somewhat similar to what we were going through earlier, but a different variation of it. So this is when you have a date set up already and you go to confirm and you get some really vague answer like, I can't. So I say, still good for tonight. I can't, sorry, right? So she's not explaining to me why she can't. She's not offering to reschedule. She's just saying, I can't, which again means one of two things. She either lost her traction or she has some unanswered concern or objection. I didn't do anything fucked up, so it's probably got to be the latter. So here I need to dig a little bit and figure out what's up. So I say, if you're too nervous, I'd understand. And she doesn't respond, right? So I follow up with a text that's become definitely a big favorite of mine, which is I genuinely didn't take you for the flaky type. And it works extremely well because no chick wants to be, you know, considered the flaky type. Even if she is a super flaky girl, she doesn't want to be considered as the flaky type. So she's going to try to basically prove that she's not, which is something that you want. So she says, I got a little nervous, I guess. I've had kind of a crappy weekend. So now we've gone to the real story here. But we need to dig a little bit further and figure out why she was feeling nervous. I say, sorry to hear, what made you feel nervous? The stripper story, LOL. So what she's referring to is early in the interaction, when she asked me for what I did for work, I said I'm a male stripper, right? Just shooting the shit. And like 99 of 100 times when I say that, the girl knows that I'm kidding and we just kind of like banter off that. But the mistake I made here is assuming that she understood my joke and because also English is not her first language, you know, it's probably some, you know, some of it was lost in translation. She probably didn't understand American humor. And as a result of that, you know, she thought I was being serious and probably felt intimidated. So here, you know, this situation can be solved very easily. I just said, oh, lol, did you think I was serious? You weren't. And then the conversation basically gets back on track. But in order for me to do this, something that's actually super silly and straightforward, I had to figure out what the underlying concern was. All right, so here we have a different example of uh, you know the chick being basically coy. So I say, mm -hmm, I'm sure love will find a way though. And she again, res she responds with something vague, to be determined, dot, dot, dot. Again, the mistake a lot of guys make here is they jump on that and say, cool, what's your schedule like? And they basically reward you know a lack of commitment. You don't wanna do that. You wanna take a step back as well. 
and then get her to commit more before you move things forward. So I say, so coy, I playfully call her out. She says, hmm, maybe I am trouble after all. You thought about that one for a while. Here I'm just playfully calling out the fact that it took her like five days to respond. She says, ha, huh, have to be sure. I say, and are you now? So now I'm the one that's pulling back. She says, I'll let you decide. And from there, it's pretty easy. Move things forward and then go for the meetup. All right, so this is a definitely a different example, but something that I'm sure a lot of guys have experienced as well. So this was a chick who I had a date with. You know, it's a good date, but we didn't have sex. She was on her period. And for whatever reason, she just didn't want to you know, have sex on her period. Okay, totally cool. But the tricky thing about situations like that is when you have a date with someone, sex doesn't happen, sometimes they like to act up a little bit, right? Because, you know, they feel like they almost like have some power over you now. It's on a very subconscious level, but it definitely exists with some chicks. So me being the good Samaritan that I am, because her AC was broken the next day after our date, I follow up on that. And I say, how's that AC doing? She says, all fixed. I say, that's good, Rhaegar was worried. If you're not familiar with my channel, that's my dog. She says, how nice of him. I say, yeah, he also said we should rub you down with more cream soon. Um, she had some sunburn. I helped her put on aloe vera. She says, I highly doubt he said that, but okay. So if you look at these last three texts, she's giving me a lot of fucking sass. You know, there's a lot of attitude here. Now, what I don't want to do is there's two, two mistakes I can make here. The first mistake is I can get overly logical and say, well, you know, we had such a nice time on our date and now you're like, you know, you're being like this, why are you doing that, right? That's the wrong approach. But second mistake I can make, which I think is more common, is just ignoring the elephant in the room and just trying to plow through. That also you don't want to do because then the chick is like, oh, I can like, you know, like fucking like kind of tool this guy and he'll respond positively by just trying to move things forward with me. So I have a lot of power over him. So I need to respond with a playful takeaway. So I say, are you going to be sassy with me now? Right. I'm kind of calling out her behavior in a non but her way. She says, aha, no sassiness. I say, good. What are you doing tonight? Just chilling with my friend tonight, kind of man mood. Sorry to hear that. Tomorrow's not day, blah, blah, blah. And then you can see how after that, you know, we're able to move things forward. Yes, I'll tell you about over next bottle of wine. Tomorrow, question mark. So now she's much more receptive. You can literally see how after the call out, her attitude over text changed. Now, if I had just plowed through and gone for the meetup without calling her out, it's debatable whether I would have actually gotten the second date. Here's another uh, interesting example. So this one was uh, me and this chick were bantering, going back and forth with some voice memo. And I think she was asking me to tell her something or something like that. Some of these voice memos are not showing up. So usually when I say, do you want me to just talk about or show you? The chick always says, show you. But this one threw me a curveball and she says, um, talk about it. Now I need to reframe this whole thing and make her seem like that's the wrong answer. So I say, well, that's no fun. She says, then why do you ask? because I didn't think you were all talk. And again, just like no chick wants to be the flaky type, no chick wants to be all talk either. And by putting them in these frames, like I didn't think you were the flaky type, I didn't think you were all talk, then they basically change their behavior and they try to you know, basically go the other way. So she says, okay, show me that, good. I say, that's better, you're feeling spontaneous tonight. What do you have in mind? Splitting a bottle of wine in a romantic balcony and she doesn't respond. So what do you do when a girl doesn't respond to your clothes? I follow up with a little bit of a takeaway with if that's cool and she says not really don't take this the wrong way but I don't feel comfortable safe going to your place just like that I mean I don't know you okay so stranger danger but we really want to I think the big theme you're noticing with my text is I like to really get to the bottom of the underlying concern and get the chick to express it instead of just assuming so I say stranger danger question mark that's the best description I say okay I have a solution Okay, what's the solution? We can take Rhaegar for a nice walk and you can come up with some wine if you feel comfortable. Mm, can I think about it? It won't be today, obviously, because it's kind of late. I'm too comfy in my bed. So this is better, but as anyone who's done sales knows, when a prospect says, can I think about it? 99 out of 100 times, that's going to be no. So we need to dig a little bit deeper to figure out what's up. So I respond with another takeaway. Yes, do you not like my plan? She says, I do like it. It's kind of a good solution. Now she has actually verbalized a positive response. That's good. I say, I think so too. And a few days later, I kind of persist a little bit more by sending her a cute picture of my dog and saying, Rigor is waiting. She says, oh, look at that beautiful face. And from there, I'm able to set up the date, ironically, straight to my house. And you can see the, all the screenshots, the lay report, if you go on the forums, forums.playingfire.com. I have them all there. All right, so here is something that's somewhat similar, but also different. So uh, I'm trying to make plans. I say, I could be down. What's your schedule like? I'm free tomorrow, I think. 
That's a non-committal way of trying to of confirming plants. Now, I don't want to just jump on that and be like, yeah, sure, it sounds good. What time is good, right? That's not going to work. What I need to do is to playfully call this out and get her to commit fully. So I say, you don't sound confident. She says, low, I am. I feel like I made plants, but I can't remember. So I'll just pencil you in and whatever comes up, I'll cancel with them. So how much better is this than the previous text she sent me, right? Like just with a little bit of a takeaway, I got her to commit to our date, you know, much more significantly. And from there, it's pretty easy. You know, I'm just, I say, perfect, see you tomorrow. Um, so here we're just moving things forward. I say, we can just share that joint romantic balcony and cheers, she responds with another tricky text. She says, you're going to feed me though, right? Again, don't want to get overly logical and say, oh, I don't feed girls who I don't know yet or something like that. Uh, I'm not a provider. I don't want to, you know, also be like, yeah, sure, baby, I'll do whatever you want. I want to take some middle path. So I say, yes, if you play your cards right. So she has to earn, you know, earn my, you know, whatever, my affection. She says, well, if I play my cards right, if you play your cards right, you might get lucky. And then from there, it's pretty straightforward. We set up plans and she comes over the next night. All right, another good example. So this is a chick who I was trying to uh, make some plans with. And she was just, the conversation was kind of stalling out. She's being a little bit flaky. So I say, I honestly did not take you for the flaky type. I'm really not, but I'm not just looking for a hookup. Okay, so this is a text I'm sure pretty much every guy who does a lot of, you know, or decent amount of online dating have got. So what we need to do here is we need to basically get her to question her assumption that all I want is a hookup. And if you weren't, if you never explicitly said, oh, I just want to fuck you, it's very easy to do this. All you have to do is say, and when exactly I say I was looking for just a hookup. True, never directly. I guess I assume based on flirty text and mentioning sex, which I'm not against, but Tinder does have a reputation. So this will happen from time to time. Girls, while they may be sexting you or you know responding in a flirty way, the next day they go back to the interaction like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. Now this guy just thinks I only want sex and he probably only wants sex, so I better not meet up with him, right? So I say, yes, I do like me some flirty texts, but no, I'm over a one night stand. Always found them a bit unfulfilling, plus sex gets even better after you build some chemistry. So that's the ultimate reframe when a chick asks you if you're just looking for a one night stand. And she agrees with this, and from there it's very easy. You can see the full lay report on the PWF website. And we have our last example. So this one, is something that again is also I'm sure a lot of guys have experienced is conversations going in a flirty direction and then the chick just basically like just completely changes her mind and says like uh, yeah like oh wait like I, I you know I don't get the wrong idea even though I've been sexing you earlier I'm not that kind of girl so she's her way of saying that is I don't want to disappoint you but this isn't really going to go where it's sounding r like right now I don't do the whole casual hookup situation I'm not into it which ironically is when we met up, we did have a casual hookup and it seemed like really that's all she wanted. So that's the ironic part. So here I do a takeaway, I say, oh, you didn't strike me as a type who judges herself. I don't judge myself on the contrary. I have my own belief system that isn't predicted by social norms, no big deal. I still need to get to the underlying concerns. So I say, that's good. Are you concerned that this is just going to be a one night stand? Not necessarily my last one night stand. So now she's expanding on herself. And from there, it's pretty easy. I kind of get the, you know, the answer out of her. I say, what? No cuddles, question mark. And then she's like, haha, blah, blah, blah. From there, it's easy. You can also see the full layer report for this one on the Forbes. But so there you have it. Here are some you know, examples, some tricky situations that I think a lot of guys would get themselves stuck in and not being really sure what to respond. But I wanted to show you guys exactly how I handle each one of these and respond in the optimal way to get a positive outcome. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable and are able to adopt a lot of these examples to improve your overall texting success. Show me some love by smashing the subscribe button and also helping me get to 30,000 subs. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And until next time.